Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Wednesday, your hump day. <laughs> Sorry guys. Uh, this is a general energy reading for Wednesday, January 15th. Bear with me for a second. I just realized that I have to close my blinds because it's not so cloudy this morning and the sun is rising and it's beautiful absolutely gorgeous but in about 20 minutes or so the sun is going to come pouring into my room and it's going to screw with the lighting Ooh. so bear with me while i do that okay so keep in mind that this is a general energy reading so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't um also keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid so just because this is dated for the now i feel like all the, the color on my screen is all off um, just because it's dated for the 15th, sorry guys, just because it's dated for the 15th doesn't mean it has to be only, it only resonates at that time. Okay. Time is an illusion. Energies are fluid. So whenever this resonates for you, that is the message for you at that time. Yes. Okay, great. Let's get into what we, oh, actually, no, before I go into the pre-shuffle energies, I just want to say that, um, I want to mention we're not doing happy hour tonight. I actually may not do happy hour this week. Today is the wake for Mama Nira. Um, and for those of you that have donated to the Nira family, um, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. You guys are amazing. Um, if, if any of you haven't done so yet and you still would like to donate the link, um, I'll put the link in the, in the description box of this video again, but it's also on my Instagram page and it's on Facebook. Yeah, it's, it, it's um, the only link, the only thing that's in my bio on Instagram. So if you would like to make a donation, the link can be found in the description box below here, and it can be found on my bio on Instagram. And also I posted it on Facebook yesterday. But tonight is the wake. So um, I plan on being there for that. So no happy hour tonight. The uh, alternative could be to do happy hour tomorrow. However, <laughs> a very dear friend of mine um, hit me up um, to hang out and she's actually going to be going to a dance class and I might go with her just because I haven't been to a dance class in the longest time and it's a house class too. I love, I love house. Anyway, so I'm not sure yet. Um, either I'll be doing happy hour tomorrow or I'll be going to a dance class tomorrow. We'll see. I'm not sure. <laughs> Spirit is saying, Eric, take the opportunity to move your body. It's like, okay. And I've been wanting to go to a, I've been wanting to like really go to a, a class for a while. For those of you that don't know, I used to be a dancer. Um, I am actually trained in everything, ballet, tap, jazz, modern, hip hop, contemporary. Um, I was a dancer for quite a few years. Um, but I got out of that because it's just a toxic environment, just like a lot of things in the entertainment industry, you know, I'm like, Hey, whatever. I'm not trying to pass judgment. It's just for me, it was just too toxic and I had to get out of there, but man, do I love dancing. Um, so anyway, okay. So that's the, that's the scoop. Let's get into today's energies here. So the, the card that popped out for your pre shuffle is the high priestess. Okay. And she's, it, we're, oh, okay, <laughs> but the overall energy of the Ten of Wands on this side and the Hierophant on the other side, okay? So we have the counterparts here between the High Priestess and the Hierophant. And this is an energy where indoctrination, I keep hearing in, indoctrination, but um, it feels like what is happening for some individuals out there, whomever I'm channeling for at the moment, whoever this message is meant for, you are going through a phase where you're leaving the indoctrination of, um, you know, the patriarchy, society, whatnot, whatever. You're leaving that behind. You're getting past all of that and you're starting to be in, um, um, what is the word? It's not indoctrinated when it comes to the high priestess. It's um, initiated into the higher secrets or the higher realms of the universe here. And so what that is influencing for you is a release of burdens, okay? The first thing that you have to do before you can be let in on the high priestess's secrets here is to release 
all of the burdens, the belief systems, the, um, the, the low vibrational ties, the, everything that is, that is associated with, well, not everything, but like the negative things that are associated with the, the hierophant, the lower vibrational, extremely dense situations. This is literally, this literally is looking like and feeling like the, a process of ascension, ascending from lower vibrational dimensions and realities up to higher states of consciousness. But in order to do so, I'm hearing ego. So what, in order to do this, you have to release a lot of what the ego has been holding on to, a lot of what you may be burdened by. You're leaving your old self behind. And in some cases here, it's as if you're trying to carry all of the burdens from the past, the burdens from whatever it is you've learned here while tangoing with the Hierophant, but you can't take all of that with you. I mean, it's very much, it, it's very much that phrase, you know, when the phrase that you can't take it with you, which, um, actually is also the name of the title of a play that I was in in high school. Wow, that's funny. Was it high school? Was it middle school? I think it was like eighth, it was like eighth or ninth grade. Anyway, you, but you literally can't take it with you. So what does that what does that mean? That means that when you die, when you pass on, you can't take all the physical stuff with you. Okay, so this it's not like someone's dying here. And that's not what I'm saying. Although, yeah, all right, this could spirit just said, well, ego, death, transformation. Yeah, all right, cool. Okay, death and rebirth, sure. But you can't take a lot of what you learned through indoctrination with the Hierophant. You can't take that into school with the high priestess now. Because the high priestess is about to open your mind to the vastness of the universe. Whereas the Hierophant energy here was very limited, very 3D, very controlling, very confining, okay? And I don't want you to think as you're coming from this place of, you know, being indoctrinated or, or, or working with the energies or what the, the Hierophant has to teach you or what, had, what he had to teach you, I don't want you to think that it was bad because it wasn't bad. It is part of your process. It's part of all of our processes. It's part of... The system designed to help us ascend and grow and master ourselves. Good Lord, it looks like the Page of Wands is underneath the Ten of Wands. Well, would you look at that? It sure is. And it's none other than the side with the Phoenix. To me, the Page of Wands is an energy of, um, it can be representative of like minor arcana version of the Hermit in which the hermit you go on a journey of self-discovery and you tr find your truth and you you your light and you bring that forward and you shine it here in the page of wands this is like an energy of re-identifying yourself reclaiming your power um rediscovering your power discovering the fact that you even had any sort of power you know what i mean the page of wands can also be a um a messenger but here especially with the phoenix rising yes from this bush that was burning i guess is it is it from that bush? No, it's not from that bush. It's from a fire that's behind the bush. But anyway, <laughs> um, it's a literally rebirth, okay? Transformation. <laughs> my phone just, I don't know if you guys heard that, but my phone just went off. So that was confirmation for you right there. Um, so, you know, you're in the beginning for whomever this is for. And maybe, maybe these are some new people that are new to my channel or new to their own um, activation or awakening process, but it feels like th this is kind of like one of the first steps. It kind of, I'm kind of feeling an energy of you are, you have been in this with the Hierophant for some time, but now you're ready to start learning from the high priestess. It's like you just now have reached the high priestess's doorstep and she greets you lovingly. She greets you with open arms. There's a little bit of sternness here. I feel a bit of apprehension. It's like, you know, you were comfortable with the Hierophant, but now that you're in front of this high priestess energy, it's like extremely intimidating. Um, I get a very seriousness from it, but it's not because like she hates you or she's mad at you or like you're needing to like prove yourself in some way. It's, it's just that shit's about to get real because <laughs> you're about to unravel a whole bunch of secrets. And there's a lot about the indoctrination that you learned here with the Hierophant that needs to be unraveled so that you can see the deeper meaning behind it. And then 
you get shifted into higher states of awareness, higher states of consciousness. You go through all of that. Yeah. Wow. This is a good place to start today. Okay, cool. So let's get into the rest of this here. Um, I just want to adjust. Oh, oh, okay. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but I just adjusted the, the color. I'm ugh. Sorry, guys. I don't, uh, <laughs> I'm being, uh, my Virgo rising is showing again. I'm going to leave it there. It just looked so yellow. Ugh. Now it probably doesn't look right. I don't know. I'm not... I'm not a colorist, you guys. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. All right. Whatever. I just put it back to where it was because I don't want to... Whatever. It's fine. It doesn't... It's fine. It's fine, Eric. Okay. Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles just popped out. Um, Ace of Pentacles is, at the, is an overall. And then with the Seven of Cups. But the Seven of Cups... This is the good side of the Seven of Cups. So this is a slow process, okay? This is something that's going to take some time. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. You have to be patient with it, but this is a brand new beginning for sure. I just heard from start to finish. That's interesting. It's a brand new life. It's a brand new opportunity. Um, and you have help. And that help is here in the form of the angels and the, and, and the ascended masters, God, source, creator, however you want to describe it. Okay. Oh my god, that's terrible. No, wait, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. <laughs> I'm fucking with the color again. Okay, I'm gonna leave it right there. <sighs> yes, I know I said that once before. Shut up, actually. <laughs> Stop calling me out. <laughs> I love you guys. All right, I'm gonna give this one more shuffle here. Ooh, hi, Ace of Cups. And then... All right. Let's see. Oh, but now the Seven of Swords. Eee! It doesn't matter. We're not. It doesn't matter. Okie dokie. Okay, let's see what else we've got for today. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Wednesday. January 15th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys. Um, Spirit is saying five shuffles, so we will do five shuffles. One. Um, I do want to mention that today is the 15th of January. So here in the States... If this applies to you, your quarterly taxes are due. Yes, I dealt with that yesterday. I wanted to pull my hair out. <laughs> Two. <sighs> Life. Three. <laughs> For our Wednesday, January 15th, 2020. Four. And last but not least, five skis. <laughs> All right. Cool. Let's see what else we've got for you guys today. What's going on with the collective? What else do we want to discuss today? Please, spirit. <sighs> Wednesday, January 15th, 2020. Wednesday, January 15th. Ooh, I keep hearing indoctrination. It's interesting. Wednesday, yeah, take that one. Okay. Eyes are closed, so I don't see what's going on here. Wednesday, January 15th, please, spirit. We're going to give this one more pass. And we'll see what we have for today. Wednesday, January 15th. 2020. Okay. Okay. 
All right, that's enough. Overall energy, we have the Two of Pentacles with ooh, the Seven of Pentacles. Okay. We also have the Moon, the Five of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, the Ten of Pentacles, and the Queen of Swords. Very interesting. Overall energy being the seven of pentacles with the two, of, I'm sorry, with the, yeah, with the two of pentacles. There's a lot of pentacles here. Um, so we're really talking about a lot of physical reality. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is speaking to the indoctrination that someone may have gone through in the past. Um, what I'm seeing here with your storyline, you have the moon, the five of pentacles, the nine of wands, the ten of pentacles, and the queen of swords. So there was some sort of illusion put forth towards you. Okay. Confirmation, I guess. <laughs> All right. So there was some sort of illusion that helped you only to feel lack than, less than. Um, I'm hearing lack of control. So, uh, uh, ooh. Okay, from the father. All right, so, okay. But what I'm getting is <clears throat> whatever indoctrination that you dealt with in the past, um, it was illusionary and it only helped to make you feel less than. It only helped to put you down. It only helped to, or it worked to strip you of your power so that you, you were powerless obviously, um, in the eyes of, or um, in terms of like people that were trying to control you. I'm getting a very, very much like a type of like a religion type thing where it has some religions work to um, devalue and, and, you know, some of the religious structure, um, you know, has meant, has worked to get you to believe that you are less than worthy of God or speaking with God or blah, blah, blah. And basically it worked to control individuals, to strip them of their own personal power so that they can control these individuals um, and whatnot, whatever. So yeah, that's kind of the indoctrination that I'm picking up on here. And there was an energy of perseverance, right? Of being battered and bruised. And what I'm getting with this nine of wands here is that even though you know, part of you felt like something wasn't quite right. You still fought, you still went for it. You still followed the guidance. You still followed the steps. It's almost as if it's like, this almost even kind of feels maybe cultish, um, <laughs> something like a pyramid scheme or like, like, I mean, yeah, I'm hearing fraud. Um, so this doesn't necessarily just have to be religion or anything like that. This could be, this really could be anything in which you were indoctrinated, you were brought in, you were kind of people, the system that you were dealing with, tangoing with kind of worked to brainwash you. And what I'm picking up on here is like, there are many people, there were many others that were a part of this or that were associated with this. This could be really specific for someone, but this is what I'm picking up on. So either this is what's happened in your situation or this is symbolic. Okay. But what I'm seeing is that I'm seeing an individual that is a part of this massive group that in which these people have been indoctrinated and brainwashed and and brought into the fold only you know and these might be people that were kind of like outcasts or whatnot whatever um you know addicts whatnot like people that were basically people that were vulnerable okay and didn't necessarily have a support system and so they were you were brought into the fold only to come to find out later on that this was not this was actually a toxic situation. This was not the right place for you. This was not the, this is kind of like a bait and switch situation. This is not what you thought it would be. This is not where you intended to let, to, to end up, right? But there was still an energy of perseverance with this nine of wands. It's like, well, no, I'm here now. I got to keep doing this. Maybe it'll get better. Maybe it'll change. I mean, they're telling me, they're, they're feeding me all these stories and which really are lies. I mean, you could have been really dealing with narcissists here. Um, a narcissistic group of individuals is what I just heard. Okay. But with all that said, 
it seems that you've learned the lesson or it seems that you've completed the cycle to a certain extent. Ten of Pentacles, all right? The Ten of Pentacles is definitely an energy of longevity, it's family, it's career, it's finances, it's, it's abundance, but it's also an energy of being in something for the long haul. And then it being a 10, I do see this as a completion of a life lesson or a life circumstance and now being able to move on to the next, okay? So here I do see that even though you went through all of this, with the moon and the five of pentacles and you persevered you just kept going now it seems that you've come out of that you learned your lesson and you're ready to clear this queen of swords okay you're ready to to, to cut yourself away from this so it this is this queen of swords energy is you i do feel like this is you but this is you making a decision to remove yourself from this situation but that is influenced by the high priestess energy that came out earlier right it's it's you standing before the high priestess and her kind of and that energy kind of like helping you to see the phrase i just got was where you went wrong but i don't i don't even really want to say it that way because it's not like you did anything wrong it's not like you went down the wrong path you went down a path that taught you something and that's all that's necessary to understand here you don't have to look at it as i made the wrong i made a wrong turn or i did something wrong blah 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 whatnot whatever no it's more about what you learned here rather than being right or right or wrong so it's that high priestess energy as you stand before the high priestess and she starts to reveal certain things to you that influences you to take up this queen of swords energy and to start making cuts to start turning your back on certain situations, certain people, certain circumstances, what not, whatever. Belief patterns, energetic cycles, what, like all of that, okay? You may not necessarily be in this Queen of Swords energy just yet, but you're getting there. You're starting to get into it is what I just heard. And, 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 and at, at this could reach a tipping point once this Queen of Swords energy really starts to like settle in. Like it could be a situation in which the floodgates open and now you're seeing everything from this queen of swords state and you might go, you might get a little, a little manic and start just cutting things out willy nilly. Be careful. I mean, I, I, I get that energy. Just be cautious because you don't want to, you don't want to accidentally cut someone or something out of your life that maybe you didn't necessarily need to. But it's like this, it's like once you reach a certain level of awareness it's like whoa i'm just cutting left, left and right here like l look we getting all of this shit out <laughs> yeah just be careful but then also what i want to say too so your overall energy with being the two of pentacles and the seven of pentacles this is where you are right now and i didn't quite understand what this energy meant until i until i worked my way through the story but now i see what this overall energy is so this is a moment where you are kind of like sitting where you are and taking stock trying to understand what it is you've been through trying to say pick it apart and say okay what pieces of this do i want to take with me and what pieces of this do i need to come to discard altogether and then also saying to yourself okay well what is the next move what is the next step what is the next what what, what is the next thing i'm going to plant what do i want my harvest to be next what do I want to sow? What do I want to reap? Not what do I want to sow? What do I want to reap? Because what it is, because understanding what it is you want to reap dictates what you sow and how you care for that. Okay. And then with this two of pentacles here, there is an energy of finding a striking a balance, finding a balance in your life physically. Okay. This is all very physical. All right. So this is physical circumstances. This is people. This could be career. It could be, it could be even a living situation, whatnot, whatever. But this is very physical with all these pentacles here, right? But with this two of pentacles here, there's an energy of striking a balance and waiting for some sort of chips to come in. Maybe even keeping the balance so that finding some sort of balance so that once your ships do come in and you can board that ship, it will take you to where you want it, where you want to go next. I want to see what's under this two of pentacles now. Ha! Huh, the knight of wands. That's cool. Not that important, but the knight of wands is like an activation. I'm hearing seeing things clearly. Okay, that's cool. Okay. So, let's um let's let's go a little deeper here. Uh ha, ha. 
I don't even have anything specific that I want to ask. I just want to I just want to go a little bit deeper into these energies here for you and see what else I can pull out. How else I can help you understand what's going on for you right now. One more shuffle. One last shuffle. Okay. So let's see what this is then. All of this energy. I don't even want to break it apart. Oh, shit. Look, it's the Hierophant. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Okay. Nine of Pentacles. Fucking right, yo. Temperance. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Is that the King of Pentacles? That's enough. Yes, it is the King of Pentacles. My, my, my. Well, would you look at that, y'all? Overall energy is none other than the sun. The sun to your moon. Hello. That's really cool. And it's funny because while I was in this space of like channeling this this message or, 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 you know, working my way through this story, it, there was a moment where I very, where I felt like it was very much an, in a situation where you dealt with the moon energy, the illusion, the, the confusion, whatnot, whatever. But now here comes the sun. <laughs> here comes the sun. Do, do, do. <laughs> but the sun is coming out now. So this is illumination. This, um, I just heard indoctrination is giving way to free thinking. Well, you're damn right it's giving way to free thinking. You have the nine of pentacles here. This is stepping out on your own. This is finding a sense of, of, of um, independence. And this is very much an energy of someone kind of like disconnecting from the hive mind, if you, if you will. Um, whereas having some sort of social structure was really beneficial for you in the past because you needed that support system. Even though it may have been, ultimately, it may have been a toxic situation, it doesn't matter because it was necessary or it was the best thing for you to help get you to this point where you can step out on your own and be independent and think for yourself, act for yourself, be your own true self. Hi, Starling. Oh, the starlings are back, you guys. Um, so then you have temperance with the king of pentacles, okay? So the temperance card here is representing balance, alchemy, and union within. The positive and the negative coming into balance within yourself, masculine and feminine, dark light, whatever. And recreating or realchemizing you into this brand new form. This new form that is well manifested, grounded, and secure, represented by the king of pentacles here, okay? Um, don't get caught up on the gender. Don't get caught up on the gender because we do have a balance between masculine and feminine energy. We have the queen of swords here and now we have the king of pentacles. Okay. And this is not, I'm not, I'm not picking up anything on like counterparts or anything like that. I mean, this could, maybe this is your counterpart. I don't know, but like, this feels like we're talking to somebody here who is moving out of an energy of indoctrination and moving more into an energy of freedom. And that's really what the high priestess can represent, um, especially being the feminine counterpart to the high, the hierophant, where the hierophant is the masculine. The hierophant is very controlling, very conformist. Um, the hierophant represents uh, structure, organization, um, uh, 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 what is the word I'm looking for? Like government, university, uh, um, institutions, things like that. Like that's the, the Hierophant is very, is a very rigid energy, a very controlling energy. Um, but it serves a purpose. It's not all bad. It does in fact serve a purpose. And then you get to the high priestess, which is liberating, which is freedom, which is, which is, um, uh, uh expanded awareness, uh, the laws of the universe. It could even represent your higher self. Um, so it's very interesting. So throughout this situation here for whomever this is for, you are 
doing this dance between masculine and feminine energies, the, the, the principles, the, the, the teachings, what, what masculine energy represents and, and, and teaches you and what feminine energy represents and teaches you. Neither one is better than the other. You might be more comfortable with one or the other, say like if you're more of a masculine individual, whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter, we're speaking of energy here. But like say you're more of a masculine individual and the Hierophant energies feel like home to you, but then you get to the High Priestess and you're like, oh God, this is so weird, this is awkward, I don't know if I can do this, blah, 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 but you can do that, like you can do this because you have, within you, you have both masculine and feminine energies, right? So then like take me for example, I am physically male, but I resonate more with um, feminine energy and the high priestess. The lessons that I learned or had to go through throughout my life up until this point, not to say that it's over by any extent, uh, to any extent, but like up until this point, the, the, the lessons that I dealt with in terms of what the Hierophant had to teach me so far were some of the hardest lessons that I have I've had to face in my life because masculine energy I, I mean, I, I obviously, I I'm, yes, we have all both. We have both masculine and feminine. But for me, the realm of the masculine is very challenging for me. Whereas the realm of the feminine, that's like, hey, honey, I'm good. This, I'm home. Like this is it. I'm ready to do this. I can live here for the rest of eternity. But I had to. I have to experience masculine, the masculine side, and I've done much better with it. I've gotten much more comfortable with it, and now I do really appreciate it, and I'm, I'm really grateful for everything that I've learned so far, and I'm eager to learn more, but let me tell you, in the beginning, man, that shit was not easy. <laughs> I hated it. I absolutely hated it, okay? Wow, but this is really good. This is very, very good. So you're, you've, you, for whomever this is for, you have definitely changed. You have definitely transformed. You have re-alchemized yourself. You have found a greater balance within yourself, which is allowing you to show up in a much more solid and substantial way in your life. Way more independent, way more secure, way more confident in yourself and your abilities. That is excellent. You, who for whomever this is for, you really, really should be proud of yourself because you've come a very, very long way. Yes? Excellent. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to get a final closing message here from Spirit, and then we're going to get our Oracle Guidance. And I, f and I really kind of want to get our Oracle Guidance from the Sacred Rebels Oracle, but the problem, the problem with that deck is sometimes the definitions can be really long. So I might, it, depending, like to save time, we'll see, um, I might have to paraphrase a little, but I really, I'm really feeling called to that deck right now for today's reading, so we're going to use that. All right, last shuffle. Here we go. Closing message from Spirit. Page of Pentacles, starting brand new. Ooh, Ace of Wands. Oh shit, the tower. You know, this tower is not a bad thing. The Queen of Cups, oh yes. I love that, take the top three. Page of Wands, Ten of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles. Very nice. With the Ten of Cups at the bottom of the deck, y'all. This is beautiful. So, first of all, I want to talk about this tower energy here. Because what I feel from this tower is really not bad at all. It's really not bad at all. This is you breaking free. This is literally you breaking free from the, the structures and the confines that have held you back in the past, or at least just kept you in that space of indoctrination, mind control, like a brainwashing kind of mind control-ish, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. Okay, fine. Um, I, I mean, I really, I, I don't want to make this out to be any worse than it actually is. Um, and I, I'm not trying to mainly because whatever it is you dealt with, whatever it is that you were coming out of, whatever it is that you were breaking free of was necessary, okay? It was necessary for your, your path, for your journey up until this point, all right? So you're breaking free from that. The Tower, the Ace of Wands, the Page of Pentacles. Now, this could be something that could be a little bit upsetting, maybe to yourself, 
because there could be some realizations that come with breaking free from this and okay that can that can create a little bit of drama for you but also this could be drama in the people around you like maybe some of the people that are still a part of whatever group or organization or reality that you're now breaking free from okay but that's where the queen of cups comes in compassion understanding empathy this doesn't mean this doesn't mean that you you know you you have these you lacking in boundaries i mean you've you got you've made a choice you've got a path to walk so you got to go do that okay but that doesn't mean that you have to hold any hate or animosity for anyone that may be struggling with the fact that you're moving forward that you're you're striking you're 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 you're, you're going off on your own path you're following your own guidance you're following your own intuition whatever like and this is also you coming out of this, standing strong and have, holding compassion for the people that are a part of whatever it is you're breaking free from, even if they're not, you know, they're not an uproar. I just, I, in an uproar, I feel like this is you with this Queen of Cups energy. This is you looking back on the past and having love and appreciation and dare I say gratitude for it. Recognizing the value that it has brought you even if the situation was toxic even if you were i don't know with an abusive partner or and and, and yeah okay i'm how can you sit here and say that you know abuse is necessary i mean <laughs> i don't know how to put this into words other than the way i just did it's like you learned from it for some reason you manifested it into your life or you you aligned with it for a reason. And that reason here is to, to ooh, I heard believe in yourself, okay. Um, that reason is to learn, to expand and to grow. And it looks like you've done that. So if you, regardless of what the circumstances are, if you have an open and healed heart, if your heart is open and healed enough, you can be able to look back at some point, you will be able to look back at what it is you experienced, no matter how difficult it may have been, and have love, or at least hold love and compassion, maybe even gratitude for the situation, because now you're bigger, you're better, you're stronger than you were before. You came out alive. You survived. You, 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 Let's just go ahead and call you Madonna because you live to tell, right? That's what that's and, and I, I understand that is a difficult concept to 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 wrap your head around. It's like, how can I uh, how why, how, why, and how could I or should I hold love or compassion or understanding for my abusers? Guys, hurt people, hurt people. No one is born a narcissist. No one is born fill in the blank. These are all parts of the indoctrination that we deal with in life. So again, especially with this Queen of Cups, yes, hold your boundaries, but also hold compassion. But I'm not, and I'm not saying that spirit is i mean yeah spirit is saying that could be a little bit of advice but that's what spirit is saying that's where you are or at least that's where you're meant to be or where you're headed and then you get to the page of wands the three of the three of pentacles but then also the ten of pentacles again the page of wands again as well re-identifying yourself moving forward lesson learned moving on to the next thing building that next thing three of pentacles Building that new foundation, build a, a working, a, a level of self mastery has been completed here. And you can re identify yourself with the Page of Wands. Beautiful. And then you have the Ten of Cups as your overall energy. I mean, this is like emotional fulfillment. What I'm really feeling as the Ten of Cups here is there is a level of emotional fulfillment for you in reaching this this state so far but then there's also an element of being able to 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 cultivate greater emotional fulfillment moving forward now that you have reached this position this is beautiful energy so for whomever this is for congratulations absolutely congratulations
Okay, let's get our oracle guidance here from the Sacred Rebels. I, I love this deck, you guys. It is such an amazing deck. Such an amazing deck. Like I said, though, some of the some of the cards can be a little long winded, but we're just we're just gonna go with it. I'm feeling called to to use this deck, so if we get one of those longer winded cards, then let's do it. <laughs> okay, final shuffle here, and then we'll get your oracle guidance for today. Ooh, <laughs> yes. Card number 11, Diving for Light. Well, shit, y'all. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, look, and sure enough, you guys, sure enough, this definition is like three and a half pages long. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm -mm. We're going to read it. Buckle up, kids. <laughs> Get comfy. If you want to pause, you know what? Why don't you like pause the reading right now? Go refresh your cup of coffee or something. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. Diving for light. How brave you are. You are diving for light. It can be so much simpler to seek light in the heavenly, in that which is blissful, sweet, loving, and kind. To look for the light in that which is dark is an advanced task that only a rebellious and brave heart will attempt. You may not feel that you have taken such a journey by choice, yet you have taken this wise challenge on from deep within your soul. Your innermost being has evoked this situation in your life with the intention that you grow in power, wisdom, and creative juice. It also wants you to experience a bold and fearless trust in life and become further empowered to live it with zest and courage. The Oracle of Diving for Light speaks of a time when you are called into darkness through life circumstances, situations, relationship challenges, or inner struggles that defy clear understanding. That darkness might be a creative block, a sense of being in a void or f a, a, a sense of being in a void or feelings of depression, rage, sadness, fear, or anxiety. There may or may not be an obvious cause. The darkness might be generally accepted and socially acknowledged because there is a socially acceptable or obvious reason for it, such as a death, divorce, or retrenchment. I don't what's a retrenchment? Anyway, however, there may be no obvious justification for your experience of darkness. You might, need to, you might not need a, quote, reason to be able to accept it. Likewise, you may struggle to find an unconditional acceptance of your experience. Just know that you are actually on track and right where you need to be. <clears throat> our creative process and our spiritual path go through a similar, quote, turning of the wheel. There is a spring and summer in the seasons of our soul, as well as in the earthly ones. There is an autumn harvest and there is a death inherent in winter when energy is concentrated and pulled within to seek out the darkness where it can rest, regenerate, and simply be until the time is right for new life, energy, and creative inspiration to birth forward. When diving for light, one must be willing to bear the darkness and understand it has a purpose, much like winter does upon the earth. It is not in error or through lack of consciousness that you are here now. It is a testament to your spiritual growth and creative process, not a sign that you are lacking or stalling. This oracle brings particular guidance that although you are powerful, you are also vulnerable at this time. You need to be alert to sabotage and criticism that, might, that may make your progress more difficult than it already is. That would be rather unnecessary. At least some of the people around you might be more attached to their fear and doubt than to their faith in your process and the ways of the creative, rebellious spirit path that asks us to trust unconditionally. They may be frightened due to a lack of understanding. You don't need to carry their fear for them. You have your own process to attend to, and they can choose to be inspired by your journey or frightened by it. 
they are free to respond as they wish. And whatever you, whatever those responses are, they are part of their journey for them to walk through. You also need to be vigilant against the darker forces within you. These are the voices that you may not expect, particularly if you are a pure-hearted being who typically resonates with love. These voices or feelings might surprise you with their dark intensity. They might be feelings of hate, terror, or wanting only to sleep because anything further is all just too hard. They may contain vicious criticism of yourself or tell you that your inner creative work is pointless, unoriginal, or, worth, or not worth it, or stupid. These dark forces might try to tell you that you are on the wrong path, suggest that you will fail, or ask with great condensation, who the hell do you think you are? You must stay in your heart and not believe these dark forces. Stay in compassion. Fear creates the energy of anger, hate, and destructiveness. These forces are a part of life. We don't have to be frightened by them, nor do we need to deny their existence or try to ignore them in order to find light in the darkness. We just need to hold compassion and be intelligently aware so we can avoid being seduced into the trap of needing to prove ourselves or into the mistaken belief that we need to fight against darkness. It is too easy to get caught up in trying to heal the dark. Darkness just is. Recognize it when it is there and be in your compassionate heart. All you need to do is make a choice. Will you stay in your heart or will you be seduced by darkness and overcome by hate or sleepiness? Diving for light is a spiritual test and a threshold for all true creative work. We successfully navigate our way through this test and pass the threshold into new creative birth by staying connected to the light of compassion in our own hearts. It is not an easy test, but it is one that, must, that you must be ready for. Otherwise, it wouldn't be coming to you. Just remember, it is the light of the heart that sustains. It exists within us always, even in the darkest depths of unknown terrain. This oracle also comes with a special message. There is a darkness within or around you that could become problematic if left unchecked. If, for no other reason, you find yourself feeling angry, irritated, hopeless, or tired more easily than usual, unable to rest, or it's just too much effort to exercise or take care of yourself, then this darkness is having an unnecessary effect on you. It is time to end that now from a place of compassion. The healing don't be afraid. You are learning this lesson and the unending power of compassion because you are ready for it. Feel honored by the lesson and stay humbly centered in your powerful, rebellious heart that refuses to be conquered by fear and remains faithful to love. And will, oh, I'm sorry, all will be well. <sighs> it's ironic that we got such a long one but I'm glad I read through all of it because it was spot on. Like it was like, like all that compassion that I was talking about right here, Queen of Cups. And the compassion that the Oracle card was talking about right here, Queen of Cups. Hold your boundaries, but hold your compassion as well. Yes? All right, kids. There you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope that was helpful for you. Please, please, please. I hope you all have a great day. I don't know what I was trying to say there, but I, I, I really sincerely hope that you all have a fantastic day. <laughs> like, please, please have a good day. Okay. <laughs> but with that said, I love you all so very much. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah. Take care. Mwah. Bye. Hee <laughs> hee